Well, we are not done speaking with CEOs. Still ahead on this Wednesday, our weekly C-suite segment. Today, we welcome a CEO in a very hot and very competitive space, and that is artificial intelligence. But this is for financial services. We'll be speaking with Greg Wolf, founder of Coalesce AI. This is Bloomberg Bay State Business, 1061 Boston Newburyport, and 1330 Metro West and the South Shore. From the city startups to its largest companies, this is C-Suite, conversations with Boston's chief executives, only on Bloomberg Bay State Business. And time for our weekly C-Suite conversation. Today we welcome the CEO uh, from the hot world of artificial intelligence. Greg Wolf is the founder of Coalesce AI, based here in Boston, which is working in fintech, in particular the more mundane corners of financial services. And Greg, your website says that you are trying to shrink the haystack. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, and, John, great to, great to be here tonight. Um, so what we find with artificial intelligence, as you say, is there's a lot of hype and excitement around the space and a lot of potential. And what we see, and in fact, some of our, our customers see this as the fourth wave after cloud, mobile, and social. So this could be the next transformative technology uh, f especially in financial services. Now, when you look at the world of AI, um, there's, we like to kind of carve the, carve the AI pyramid, if you will, in, into two different layers. Um, at the top of the pyramid, there's automating the thinking. So AI is a technology that allows folks to automate the way they do things, and automating the thinking is around being able to get hu uh, insights from huge amounts, copious amounts of data for people. Um, we think it's a little early for that type of technology. We don't know from a technology perspective and also from a societal perspective whether people are willing to come into work and have the computer tell them what to do. But where we're finding a lot of opportunity in the world of uh, financial services is automating the doing. Rather, using the AI to automate a lot of the repetitive, repetitive tedious, mundane tasks that happen in financial services every day. Can you give us some examples of those mundane tasks? Yeah, absolutely. So we have some banking customers who receive over 50,000 emails a day, and they have 300 customer service. This, cu this one customer has 300 customer service reps who literally have to touch every one of those emails and respond to them. And what we were able to do is, through our application, their business users, their customer service reps, were able to teach the system to identify around 10 different inquiries that are commonly coming up, uh, coming, uh, coming through the channels from their customers. Things like, I can't find my password, I lost my password, how do I get online, I've lost my credit card. And what the AI was able to do was able to identify and recognize those kinds of mundane queries so that and automate the responses to those, either going to the password system and getting a reset or possibly queuing up a, queuing up a re reply template like somebody who may be asking for uh, interest in a new mortgage product and thereby take the, the tedious mundane work away from the customer service reps and be left with more of the interpretive analysis work that, frankly, people are much better at. We're speaking with Greg Wolf, the CEO and founder of Coalesce AI, for this week's C-Suite conversation. And would the other party know that that was artificial intelligence sending it to them? And would it matter? Not necessarily. I mean, I think one of the things that, that, that we're able to do is, um, as Peter said, shrinking the haystack. You know, a lot of, uh, oh, would the other party know? Um, I don't think so. In fact, they, they would benefit from it. So, for instance, um, our product runs behind the scenes. It's not customer interfacing. It's really helping the financial services firm deliver better service, uh, faster service, um, faster capabilities to reply to and serve and, and uh, give their customers new product and offerings. So essentially, um, the, the, the customer, the consumer at the end of the day is not actually aware of the fact that the AI is enabling the customer service rep in that circumstance to, uh, to provide a more of a value-added, faster service. Tell us a little bit more about, uh, about the company then. Um, how big are you now? How many customers do you have? Go ahead and tell, share sales and revenue and profits with us, if you wish. <laughs> sure. Well, we're a private company, and uh, we have, uh, you know, we're still uh, closely held, so we, we, we tend not to disclose that kind of information. But essentially, um, you know, we're based in Boston. We're fortunate enough to participate in the DCU FinTech Innovation Center, which was a great launch, uh, launching place for us. In fact, we actually did a pivot last year. We started out uh, when we launched the product and the company at the beginning of last year. We were originally focused on using AI to automate investment research. 
specifically private market investment research. And we actually found that that wasn't a great area for our type of technology because it's a very competitive space. And being able to, to kind of to, uh, get alpha and, co and from, a, you know, from a machine is, is kind of tricky. But instead, what we found was that uh, working with large financial organizations, that there was a terrible demand for Im improvements and increases in the way they do their operational side of things. So we focused more on the middle and the back office. And, and DCU was actually a terrific place for us to do that because being a bank, they gave us the opportunity to understand some of those use cases. And luckily, since then, we've been able to flourish. So uh, is DCU a customer? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. We have a number of projects that we actually Im implemented at DCU. So if you can't be specific on the number of your sales, can you be uh, at least tell us about how the sales have grown by percentage? Yeah, absolutely. So last year when we launched the product, um, we, we focused on, on the investment uh, analysis side of things. And once we pivoted and started to get some real traction with our message and, and finding where the product best fits in the market, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that by the end of this year, we're expecting a 5x five, five, five uh, uh, increase in our, pro in, our, uh, in our revenue for the year, so about 500% growth this year. As we were sitting down, um, you told us that you did an angel round and then you self-funded the initial development. Do you think you can continue to do that, or at some point will you need to take in more outside money? Because this is a very competitive space. Without a doubt, and I think uh, grow, you know, it would be foolish to not take advantage of the opportunity in the market leadership position that we have been able to establish through that angel round and through some of our initial uh, implementations and, and goals. Um, actually, we, we, we received a couple of term sheets um, last year from institutional investors, but I think that's kind of a double-edged sword. And uh, we, we, didn't, uh, we didn't take those term sheets. Instead, we used some self-funding and angel money to really find that pivot point and identify where the true opportunity was. And now that we've been able to do that, uh, we certainly are uh, interested in you know, uh, hitting certain milestones and metrics uh, to go out with, another, with a more significant institutional run at the beginning of next year. Peter was asking, this is a company that you spun out of another company that you started. That is correct. Yeah, my previous company is called Vantage Software. Uh, which I founded and ran for about 15 years. And that company was focused on the alternative uh, investment market. So our customers in that space are private equity venture and real estate firms um, who manage over a trillion dollars in alternatives. And when we had this dream about AI, we saw it coming. We saw uh, Watson and Siri and self-driving cars, and we thought, huh, wow, this would be great technology to use in that business. So that, was, that gave us the impetus um, and some of the initial funding, obviously, to kind of uh, create the product and then spin it out into Coalesce at the beginning of last year. So it would seem to me that um, trying to help financial firms manage mundane, mundane tasks to shrink the, the haystack um, would be something that a lot of uh, other companies would be doing, too. Do you have competitors, or, or is, is, was this you know, a, a, a eureka moment and nobody else is doing it, or what? Yeah, there's that, well, certainly there's a lot of competition in the space. And the way we differentiate ourselves is we come at it from a business user's perspective. So when we built out the platform, we actually created a technology called UDML, User Defined Machine Learning. We find there's kind of a gap between the business users and the data scientist. And a lot of financial organizations have spun up these R&D teams and they're building out solutions internally, but they're not necessarily making it to production because they're really too technical and the business users are not comfortable with leveraging that technology. So with our technology, what we're able to do is we built a platform that allows the business user to teach the system to analyze and filter that data as they're doing their daily job. So if you take that customer service rep uh, example, as they're receiving inbound inquiries, they're able to flag them as relevant or not relevant based on how the system is classifying and categorizing them. And the system the learns. The software is doing the software. Your software is doing this. Well, the key thing is our, our software is doing the analysis, but it's based on how the user is directing it. So just like when you, when you uh, go, uh, go to Netflix and you choose a movie and you say, yeah, I like, this, I like this movie, I don't like that movie. So the system starts to learn your profile about what you like to watch, right? So what our platform does is it allows the business user to take their domain expertise and encapsulate that into the product by teaching the system to analyze that data the way they would do their regular job. And how big of a market is this, do you think? Well, we've done some analysis. I mean, there's a lot of stats floating around. Um, McKinsey uh, came out with a report recently where they said uh, that around 65 to 69 percent of data collection and processing in financial services can be automated by current technology. So that translates into, depending on how you slice it, more than $150 billion opportunity. I have uh, more with Greg Wolf, uh, the founder and CEO of fintech company Coalesce AI. 
Uh, and uh, let's see, you, you came from somewhere and got into this, so we're, we're going to get into your background a little bit. Coming up next here on uh, Bloomberg Bay State Business, 1061 Boston, Newburyport at 1330 Metro West and the South Shore. <laughs> We know of Coalesce AI. He is part of our, he is our C-suite guest today. And his company, his startup, uses artificial intelligence to improve transactions within financial services. Before we went to break, you said this was really a $150 billion space. My question to you, this is critical given all the fee compression happening within financial services. Yeah, Jenna, without a doubt, um, financial services are under a lot of pressure, especially in asset management. And being able to automate and improve um, their operations and the way they do business is, is a critical element of what they do. So our customers are very interested in using this technology to do more faster. You know, interestingly, um, there are concerns about um, job displacement, right? Everybody's afraid that the computers are going to come in, the robots um, and take people's jobs. But what we're actually finding is that by empowering the business users to do their job better, faster, more thoroughly, and we're actually starting to see our, our customers use this technology not so much as a, as a means to, get to, to cut down on their staffing, but actually to grow their operations because their staff are able to be so much more valuable in, do in terms of doing more value-added tasks and being much more um, efficient at, at, at it. Greg Wolf, you're not from here. Oh, you detected an accent. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? Tell us your story. So I'm originally from South Africa and came to Boston about 25 years ago. And uh, it, was, it was when you said chowder. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Uh, definitely. So uh, my entry point actually was in uh, through PricewaterhouseCoopers in Boston, oh. and been here ever since. Uh, worked on uh, 160 Federal Avenue for a while, uh, Federal Street. Um, so you know, when I started out uh, as a kid, I actually uh, interesting. Recently, I went back and I looked at my academic transcript uh, for some reason, and and I, and I remembered that um, I'd actually studied computer science, math, and linguistics as a kid, which was kind of an unusual combination. And I understand now, you know, um, and then I did a degree in finance, and as I said, I you know, came through into the USA via PwC in Boston. But in a way, uh, you know, my, the problem is I was 20 years too early because these days there's a whole discipline of AI called natural language processing, and mm -hmm. you can do a PhD in, the, in, in a degree in that. But at the time, 20-something years ago, you know, nobody had ever heard of that. Um, but it's really the kind of the combination of the finance and the technology that allows us to kind of deliver value for our customers. So how do you pivot from working at one of the largest companies in the world to doing startups? Well, I was very fortunate to work at, a, at, at PwC. Obviously, it was a great opportunity to learn business culture and to learn how things are done here and, and make some terrific uh, networking connections. And that's how, actually, I started my prior company, working through some uh, clients of PwC that I had audited um, in the uh, uh, private equity and venture space. And that's how it gave me the opportunity and the idea to work with them and, and figure out a solution that could help them for my prior company. And, but it takes a certain type of person to become... An entrepreneur, you were sitting there at your desk at PwC, and what happened? Well, I think I always knew that I wanted to work for myself and, um, you know, create something, uh, um, you know, beyond what, what I was working with on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, one of, the, one of the most exciting things that we found is actually we, uh, we started another organization here in Boston about a year ago called an AI Think Tank. And this think tank um, is in another initiative that we worked on. We, we, we pulled together senior operations executives from some of the largest financial services firms. Fortunately, in Boston, it's a great place you know, to, to, to work with big-name firms like Fidelity and State Street, and we have about 10 uh, similar firms in our think tank. And through this think tank, what we were able to do is uh, initially, we started about a year ago, was just to explore what is AI, how does this, you know, how does this work, what are the risks, what are the benefits, what are the opportunities, and uh, what, what landed are coming out of that think tank was some, was some real uh, interest and need in, in terms of using the technology for collaboration. So that's actually a really exciting space, and, I, and I, I think I would even call that entrepreneur in terms of figuring out a whole different avenue of where we could use this technology. Okay, but you just skipped 20 years. So, so you, were at your, you were at your desk at PwC, and, and what? You saw you – you're working with clients, and you saw something out there, a need, and then you went out and you said, you know, I'm going to start my own company. What happened? So actually what happened was I worked at PwC and I got my qualification and then I worked with a couple of uh, dot-com startups back in the 2000 era. There you go. 
And uh, there was an opportunity where actually um, one of the companies I had, after the dot-com bust, um, well, you know, I was with a company that ran out of money, and um, a friend of mine called me who had been a, a client at PwC who had transitioned to one of the largest private equity firms in Boston, and he had said to me, hey, Greg, are you available to do some consulting work? Mm -hmm. And I said to him, uh, his name's Paul, I said, yes, Paul, let me check my perfectly empty schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just ask you, we have time for just one little quick question. Can you give us some insight on, does Boston, this area, do we own AI uh, innovation? I don't know if we own AI innovation. I mean, there's a lot going on around the country, but I can just talk from my, kind of our myopic lens that I think that, you know, with all the super colleges that we have around here um, and the academic prowess, and especially around fintech and healthcare, I think that we are national leaders. And, you know, we've seen that with our think tank that uh, we're setting the stage. In fact, we were even invited to go down to, to uh, Congress and meet with the Senate Banking Committee and the H House Financial Services Committee who've taken an interest in this initiative. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Yeah. Greg Wolf, founder and CEO of Fintech Company. Coalesce AI. Keep thinking. Good stuff. Well, uh, got a great show for you tomorrow. Dick uh, Hofshire.